This is question 8 of the 2019 Higher Level Leave Insert paper. The question talks about a company that is generating revenue and they say this, they've given us this function for it. So this is a function in t, so or of t, so revenue with respect to time, is given by this function here. Here's t here. Here is how it fluctuates. So one way how students lose a lot of marks in most exams is by getting too confused by a question, especially a question like this. It's big, it's bulky. Try and stick to the main facts. Here is the, here is the function they gave us. Fine. Let's have a look what they ask us for A. For A, they ask us what is the revenue when T is 20? What is the revenue after 20 weeks? What is the revenue after 20 weeks? This is all they're asking us. This would be uh, something um, a person of a level much lower than you could do. Because it's really just filling in what we see here. It is 22500 cosine pi over 26. Instead of t, we're just putting 20 in. That's really all you have to do. After that, it's just a matter of getting a calculator and filling that out. So if you put that into a calculator, just be careful. Do, the, do it twice, I would suggest. and um, Put it into a calculator and get out uh, 20,000. 659 to the nearest decimal place. It comes out at 58.50 something. So it's slightly above the halfway point. So we're gonna go up to 59. Now what you could do is you could write out um, this part in the calculator and this part, just to show the examiner that you're doing some work. Just if you're a little worried about putting too much on the calculator. But this is full marks right here. So let's move on to part B. So it tells us that we're looking for the two times of t when the revenue, when the revenue here is equal to 26,250. 26, so that's it. It's just going to be a simple um, equation of this equal this, or more to the point, this equation here equals this. So let's start here. It's 2250. It's, it's really just going to take me time to write it. I guess I could divide everything by by 10, by 50 probably, but for now, I'll just keep it the way it is. Um, cosine pi over 26t plus uh, 37,500 is equal 26,250. Let's start rearranging a bit. If you forgive me, I will do it a little faster because I don't want to spend all my time writing here. So cosine pi over 26t, I'll try and separate that out. I'll move, I'll take this from both sides. So I will get 26250 minus 37,500, all divided by this. I'll divide both sides by that number. And then, then I can just take the inverse cosine of both sides. So I will get pi t, over 26 is equal to the inverse cosine of all of this. Um, I, better, I better double check here. I haven't made any mistakes. I've been trying to write fairly fast. And I just put this in into a calculator. Once again, I can put this into a calculator. Now there is gonna be one exception in this question, but we'll see that in a moment. So from a calculator we get, we get two pi over three. Now here comes our first problem. The calculator has only given us one answer. This is the most famous problem with calculators when it comes to trigger, trigonometric functions. So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to draw a quick picture over here of cosine x. Quick picture would look like this. Doesn't have to be accurate. <laughs> Maybe not as inaccurate as that. The examiner doesn't need to see this, but I, I, personally I use it. Not to show the examiner what I'm thinking, I use it for my own, um, my own thinking. So I just fill in a few numbers there, one and minus one. Here's where it starts repeating. This is at two pi. That's the length of cosine, um, the periodic length of it. Halfway here is pi. Halfway again is um, pi over two. And halfway between these is three pi over two. Now this answer here, two pi over three, is two thirds of a whole pi. Here is um, half of it. Two thirds must be somewhere here. Here is this answer. 
or um, if um, if what's inside the cosine. So, because look why I did this. The cosine. What's inside the cosine here is equal to this. So here's one of our answers. But there's many answers, and you are expected to do this on your own. If your calculator tells you this answer, you're expected to give them this one, this one, this one, all of them, maybe in infinite ones of them, even more over this side. There's many possible answers. In this case, this is one third pi away from pi. So how far to there is it? It's one third pi and another one third pi to here. So two more thirds pi. So another perfectly possible answer is four pi over three. Let me write some of that in here. Two pi over three. And this answer here is four pi over three. This is a perfectly possible answer. Another answer, they stay repeating every two pi's, or that's six pi over three. So that should be eight pi over three. Another one, another two on would be 10 pi over three. You don't need all of these, but I do like to give at least three or four even when I know the answer is only going to take two, or I think it is, I don't know yet. And the next one would be, let me see, I'll write just another couple here, another six on from here, pi and uh, 16 over three pi. And these stay going on forever. So we have multiple answers here, well not answers yet, we have multiple parts of the equation when we get this part. I would like people to recognize that. So I would continue on a line below in my in my exam if I had room, but I'd continue on here. So we get underneath here we would get t m is equal. Let's see, we would get twenty six divided by pi two pi over three. That's one answer. Or um, twenty six uh, pi four pi over three. And this would stay going on. We'll see how many we need. This we can equate a lot. This pi cancels here. This becomes 52 over 3. This one here becomes uh, twice that. So that's 104 over 3. The next one, if you did it out, it's just 4 times bigger than this. It's just 2 times bigger than this one. So really it's just 208 over 3 if you said going. And you could do a lot of them like this. This is five times bigger than this one, which is, I guess, 260 over three. And these stay going. But remember, the question only asked us for the answers for T. Here's answers for T. Within the first 52 weeks. Yes, there is there. Within the first 52 weeks. So this is, I'd have to put it, but this is roughly 30, 33, 35 or so. This one here is, a, is up in the 60s. About high 60s, maybe 70. We just put a calculator, 208 divided by 3. So this one's out, and therefore this one's bigger, this one's bigger. All of them are out. Here's our two answers. Here's our two answers for T. T, the revenue will equal 26,250 at these two points for T. Okay, I'll rub uh, all this out and we'll start C. Okay, C asks us about the same function again. It rewrites us for it. It rewrites it for us. But it asks us about the derivative, or prime of t. It really just asks us to find it. So we, all we have to do is remember how, because don't get too scared, they're big numbers, but it's really just um, differentiating a trigonometric function. So we just have to remember our rules about that. That uh, number out front doesn't really matter, we'll just write the constant again. It's just a constant. And then, okay, we're differentiating a cosine. So the derivative of a cosine is a, is a sine, a minus sine. So I'll put a minus out here. Let me give myself even more room here. I'll leave a minus here, because I know something's gonna go here. Minus sine, and the function doesn't change, because we're gonna use the chain rule. So we've cheated. We've changed this function in here. It's a fairly simple function in t. It's just another constant in front of it. But we use the chain rule. It, it just means we differentiate it, pretend that it does, Pretend it's a simple function, and then differentiate what was in here to fix your little cheat. So the derivative of in here with respect to t is simply pi over 26. 
and then that's that part to differentiate. This is just a constant again. The derivative of a constant is zero. That's our answer. That's good enough for me. Uh, this divides in two, goes into both of them. But um, that's a prime, that, that's close enough, I would think. I don't think the examiner would quibble about dividing by two. So D asks us to show after 30 weeks, using calculus, that the function, the revenue is increasing. So we do that by just putting the derivative of after 30 weeks. So this is still with respect to time. So after 30 weeks, what is the derivative? Now, all I need to, all I personally would need to see here is you'd write this function again, pi over 26 multiplied by 22,500 sine pi over 26, and just put a 30 there. That's all I need to see. And then you can go ahead and use the calculator to find the answer of this, which gives us 1,263.44. And I just, I would like to um, see you state that the derivative is bigger than zero. That's, that's probably enough, but again, I probably would like you to write, therefore, or is uh, the revenue or 30, not the derivative or 30 is increasing. And that's it, that would, be, that would be enough to give you full marks in that question. There is another way to do it, let me just point that out. You could um, point out that this number here, this constant, is a negative number. These are all just, uh, we, you could do it on calculator, it's just a negative number. And the sine of, let me draw a quick sine function here, is... 30 over 26 is just past halfway, is just here. That is a negative number. So you can point out that that is negative and this is negative, therefore, this is positive. That's enough. The examiner would probably like to see a picture. You could write some of that in English. They would like to see you explain why that is, but of course you could just get the, the actual number. But both are perfectly okay. They didn't ask to find out how much it's increasing. They asked this to check if it was increasing. Okay, I'll just rub this out and we'll try part E. Part E asks us to find the minimum, I believe minimum, maybe maximum, let me see. Uh, find the minimum using the second derivative to verify your answer. Okay, find what time t within the first 52 weeks the revenue is at a minimum. So basically we want to find the second derivative. Now I'm in a bit of trouble here because I rubbed out the first derivative. Let me, through the magic of editing, let me fix that. Okay, we're back. The first derivative is there. So let's do the second derivative. Similar to the first, we just leave the constant alone. And let me see, I know the answer will come out as another plus, so we can leave the minus here. Minus pi over 26. I'll leave a little space here because we're going to get, um, from the chain rule, we're gonna get an extra number here. In fact, let's do it now we're gonna get pi over 26 again. And the, 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 the 22,500 hasn't changed either. These are all constants out front. I just, I split them in half, I'm afraid, to move this one into here. And the derivative of a sine is just a cosine. Pi over 26 t. Okay, you're already getting marked for this. But we still need to show what the minimum is. So we do that by getting the first derivative second reason I needed the first derivative, um, the first derivative equal to zero. So we need to solve for that. It's minus pi over 26, 22,500. Now I could have saved myself time writing all this. I, I wonder if you see why. Um, sine pi over 26 t, so t is equal to zero. Well, I just divide by this number, divide by this here, divide by all this constant, it disappears, and I just get sine pi over 26t is equal to zero. Let me leave a bracket in just in case. Uh, oh, I forgot to rub this out, which is probably good. I didn't mean that, <laughs> I promise. There's zero. That's when sine is equal to zero here, and here, and here and it continues on a little bit. So let's go ahead and solve this. Um, that means that, let me, we'll do it up here so we have a bit of room. 
That means pi over 26t is equal to either 0 or pi or 2 pi or 3 pi or 4 pi. It continues on. Now t is limited. We'll see what it's limited by. Um, so that means t is equal to multiply by 20, uh, 0 just. Um, pi is cancelled. Multiply by 26. We get there. And the pi is cancelled, multiply by 26, we get 52. And uh, multiply by, what do we get next? Um, 78 and 104. These are all possible times for t, but of course we know this one's too big, too big. I should have stopped there. 52, in fact, was the limit within the, I think it says within the first 52 weeks. Let me check on that. We'll leave it here for the moment, but within 52 weeks would mean this is not valid. But we can leave it here for the moment, and um, because we're going to check our answer, we're going to check which of these. These are all potentially a minimum. They're all turning points, but we're not sure which is a minimum. So let's check that by doing the second derivative um, is equal. Let me write it out again: minus pi squared over twenty six squared, twenty two thousand five hundred. This is just one big minus number. Bear that in mind. Cosine pi t over 26. So once again, you can go ahead and put this into a calculator. Put t in for 0, t in for 26, t in for 52. But this time, let's use the picture again. I'll draw it again here. Here's cosine, here's t is 0, here is pi, and here is, um, I'm sorry, that's, that's wrong. Here is pi, and here is 2 pi. So let's see what we get for the second uh, derivative of or is equal to, we'll get three different answers here. When cosine is zero, we get one, one times a minus number. We basically just get a, a minus multiplied by one, which is equal a minus, which is a, therefore the second derivative is less than zero. Let's write um, at t equals zero here, just to make it a little more accurate for the examiner. At t equals pi, we're going to get a minus number again, multiplied by minus one, which is, uh, well, let's skip this bit here, which is minus by minus is a plus, which is bigger than zero. And for the last one, we would get, um, if we checked it, which we, well, yes, let's go ahead and check it. Um, at t is equal to 2 pi, we're going to get the same as the first one. We will get it's equal to minus multiplied by 1, which is less than 0. So the only one that could be a minimum is this middle one here. So let's write something like that in here. Therefore, at t is equal 26 or t is min. That would be your full marks. If you're not, if anybody's not sure what I was doing here, pause the video, have a look at it again, and also maybe just check yourself um, with the three numbers. Put them all in a calculator if you want. You should get t is equal 26 as the answer. But just to go over one more time, I'm just saying that at t equals zero, a cosine, so when we put zero in for t, this will all become zero. Cosine of zero is just one. And this is just a minus number. You can work it out in calculator what it is. It's definitely a minus number though. Um, at t is equal 26. 26 divided by 26 is equal to pi. Uh, sorry, what's in here is equal to pi. At pi, it's just minus one. Minus one multiplied by a minus number. It's just a positive number. So that's where I got these, these three things here. If you have any questions, ask in the comments. But that is uh, question eight of the Leaving Cert. Obviously, the next video will be the last question in paper one, question nine. See you then.